You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Super glad to be here hanging with Paul, chatting with you. Thankful that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. We aim to bring you a tremendous amount of value and uh, would appreciate you reaching out and just letting us know how we can do so. We need your questions at askdroneu.com. We need your reviews. We'd love to hear how you think we're doing. It is very important to us. And when you subscribe or even better become a member, it helps us out tremendously. So for all of you that have done that, thank you. And if you're just listening for information, we're happy to have you. We are definitely happy to have you. And uh, our goal and our purpose is to help you live the drone life. That's why Drone You was built to go beyond, above and beyond flight school. Because getting your 107, as many experienced drone pilots will tell you, really doesn't do much in helping you actually live the drone life. That's why we built a library of classes to help all of you pursue your creative or technical dreams using drones. And so there's no greater purpose than helping someone else uh, enjoy the liberties of being uh, an entrepreneur. So indeed. that said, our question today is all about battery management, especially for public safety. Which brings me to our sponsor of the show. Uh, he normally goes as Special Agent Bald. No, that's just his contact in my phone. I'm talking about Rob here. Uh, no, I thought they were going to be our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that on the next show. Well, actually, I'll, I'll do them as well. Uh, okay. But uh, long story short is if you are in public safety, whether you're an LEO or if you are in emergency management, fire, EMS, We've got two new programs that we just launched. Uh, well, we launched one on Props, and we're launching the second one at the end of the quarter. Uh, props Public Safety. So we have Props Public Safety LEO, which is a chronological uh, series of courses to take police officers, law enforcement officers, through a specific set of classes to essentially provide them with the right information to be proficient in the field. So the LEO class, to give you an idea of some of the courses and modules that are involved in that, uh, the LEO class includes flight operations, don't crash course, part 107, uh, the mapping course, accident reconstruction mapping, so much more detailed uh, crime scene essentially mapping, and also search and rescue. So all those things are included. Pilots do get access for a year, and so do managers as well. And managers, remember, Props was built for you to create professional, reliable operators who practice safety because a pilot can be current, but how do you know they're proficient? With props. Uh, our second sponsor for today, thanks for your email, John, uh, uh, right here at Colorado Drone Chargers. Uh, our newest sponsor of the props program is Colorado Drone Chargers. And since we're talking about battery management today, it seems uh, quite well poignant to give John a sponsorship spot. If you haven't heard of Colorado Drone Chargers, they are the most robust and reliable charging system for a variety of drone batteries. They have smart chargers that charge four batteries all at once. So that's very different from the DJI hub chargers and a lot of other chargers that you see on Amazon. Most of those chargers charge in sequence, meaning battery one is charged and when it's done, battery two begins charging and then battery three. That's all fine and dandy, but when I can charge four Phantom 4 batteries in about 45 to 50 minutes, charging all those batteries at one time really makes a big difference in my business. So if you're scaling your drone business and you need to have a lot of batteries charged all at once, you have got to check out Colorado Drone Chargers. Just go to coloradodronechargers.com and uh, check them out. Uh, man, we used to have a promo code with them, and I'm trying to remember what it was, but we'll get back to all of you uh, with that promo code. But I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, we have used these chargers for what four years now, three, three, four years uh, at least. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they're amazing. Uh, I mean, they are truly, truly amazing. Highly recommend them, especially if you are in public safety. So check that out. Hi, I just finished watching your battery maintenance video, and it was very informative. Thank you for your work. 
I work for a fire department and we have a fleet of drones that we have to fly at a moment's notice. The batteries will sit for weeks on end in storage mode, but then have to be used immediately at a moment's notice for an emergency situation. My concern is that the batteries not only will die quickly, but we're flying drones with batteries that are not fully charged. Is there a way to mitigate this situation or a way to keep batteries in optimal condition so we can fly them quickly at a moment's notice with our drone? We are flying an M210 Phantom 4 Pro, and we also have a couple Mavics that we fly. Thanks again, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you, Todd. Uh, thanks for uh, what you do, putting your, your life on the line, frankly, um, probably on a regular basis. We appreciate that. And for the question, askdroneu.com is where he asked his question. Um, very important, obviously, that your batteries stay healthy given or just in general, uh, we want our batteries to stay healthy so they last longer and we spend less money on them. But also in your case, you need to be able to get that drone up quickly with healthy charged batteries. And, uh, I think we've got a few ideas. Um, certainly our, our friends out in the Northeast part of the world that do this every day as well, have some ideas. So, uh, what have we got for old Todd here? Yeah. Um, you know, I had my answer, which I did, um, bounce off a couple of, uh, of firefighters to say, Hey, this is what I would tell them. Yeah. What would you tell them? And, uh, do appreciate that feedback. Um, I think the, the real, really the best answer, and we did include this in the maintenance section of operations for every props, uh, program, which is all about setting the discharge rate on the batteries. So uh, this is also one of those features that DJI took away for consumers, um, but remains in enterprise drones. While I'm grateful that they left it in enterprise drones, it makes me ask the, the question of, uh, well, hold on, why'd you take it away from consumers? Because you're going to buy more batteries, that's why. Anyway, let's, <laughs> uh, let's get to the meat and potatoes. So what we tell everyone is to set a discharge rate of 8 to nine days on your batteries. What does this mean? After eight or nine days, the battery will start self-discharging itself because if you store batteries with a full charge, it will actually uh, break the battery. You'll ruin the endurance of the battery, its capacity as a whole, but it's also its lifespan. And so what we tell everyone in that class is that you set up your uh, discharge rate for eight or nine days and then one day a week, and it has to be the same day, one day per week, you go out and fly. Uh, for us, we call it fly day Friday. Now, this is dual purpose. Number one is to cycle the batteries. You have to continually cycle the batteries for those batteries to stay, quote unquote, good. OK, that's really important. But also, we see a large problem, especially with public safety and drone programs as a whole, really, that they're not practicing enough. Flying drones, Rob, is not like riding a bike. Yeah. You don't just pick it up, okay? I mean, maybe if it's a tricycle, but not the same. So <laughs> that said, flying drones takes practice. You've got to continually practice flying. And if you fly every Friday at a given time, and you use the batteries that were charged and then immediately recharge them, well, now you're good for the next week. You're always ready to go for the next week. And as long as you follow that system, your batteries should have a longer life span, say 70 cycles or more. Um, if you do not do that, well, what happens is, like he said, uh, you know, we've got batteries, but, you know, we need to use them on the fly. We don't have time to charge, blah, 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 blah. There is car charging. I don't know how many 12-volt uh, ports are in a uh, fire truck, though. I'd really be curious about that. <laughs> Probably more than we would think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can charge them on the go, but uh, I know that's also, you know, not a viable solution <laughs> either. Um it, but it really is about planning. I mean, in talking to John, there's just not, there's not a magic formula. It's about systems it really and having is. a plan. It really is. And then having as many batteries as you reasonably can within budget and that are manageable. I mean, you might have a budget for 50 batteries. It doesn't mean you should have 50 batteries, but maybe 12 or whatever the number is. That brings up a really important point as I think about it, right? Because you think about budgeting and one of the sections in the public safety props course is about procurement. Yeah. And normal drone programs could probably buy, what, five batteries a year and be okay. But it seems like public safety should have a budget so that they're buying batteries 
quarterly, yeah. right? You don't buy them all at once. You know, you kind of, I know this is probably not the right word, Mr. Financial Wiz, but amortize them, you know, over uh, over the year. That's fair. I think everybody <laughs> knows what you mean by that. <laughs> so um, let's say, you know, you buy five Q1, five Q2, Q3, Q4. Sure. Um, but it seems like that that would be uh, another helpful solution for them. Absolutely. But I think more importantly, in terms of the the health of the batteries, it's going to be what you described, what John talked about. You keep however many you think you're going to need on that moment's notice that Todd described. And then if you take off to go, I don't know if this is exactly what he meant, so correct me, but if you take off to go fly, you've got batteries to get you going immediately, but then you have a rapid charger that should be charging more batteries within 40 to 50 minutes while you're on your way. Yeah. And that way you're covered, you get there, you can fly, and then you've got a new set of batteries if you need them. And that goes back to the Colorado drone chargers because that's the only rapid charger system that I have seen reliable chargers over vast, uh, you know, a wide variety of models. Mm -hmm. Um, And they last and they work. Now, that said, there were some older models that didn't fully charge batteries. Like it would be a rapid charge, meaning you get to 90 or 97%, but it's not like a deep cycle charge. Um, That is something that is important to note. Uh, I know his new chargers do the full balance charge, uh, even in rapid mode. So I would say it seems like public safety departments and I mean, this is something that I use all the time too, is having that rapid charger. It saved my ass more than once. Sure. You know, so I think these departments having them is critical. And I, and I think, you know, what you're saying uh, with John, that uh, with John's advice regarding having some always ready to go and, and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, I think that's Im- important. Now, I think that there is another solution, right? Like John mentioned, um, I think that we are going to uh, not put out that information, though. I want to give that information to John at Colorado Drone Chargers. To well, see as far if, as we know, it's not even a thing yet, so there's no reason exist. to mention it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to give the intelligence to John at Colorado Drone Chargers because if he could develop a product that essentially uh, other John mentioned, then um, it could be the solution for this issue. Oh, my gosh. That'd be so powerful. Uh, yeah, it sure would. So uh, right now, though, I mean, the real solution is one day a week you're flying because you got to have the practice. I know we kind of like breeze over that but you've got to practice flying. And also, and by the way, we have a drills and exercise course as a part of props where you can get ideas of like how to practice. Um, Cause that is a thing. Sometimes you go out to the park and you're like, okay, I'm flying. I know. And, and I'm guilty of that too. What do I do? Yeah. It's just, am I just trying to get the battery discharged or what's my goal here? So for me, I'm always trying to split the gaps. I'm always trying to make every single movement smooth and beautiful because yeah. that's the real test is keeping those fingers smooth through the entire flight. It is also things like we're sort of getting off base here from batteries. We're but just gamifying It just makes me here. think of... of going, learning how to fly with the screen and not looking at the drone, but at, going back and forth. I don't know, just things like that. Head on a swivel. Head on a swivel. Yeah. Absolutely. But no, you're right. Some of those training tips are really important because it, it, you really do get out there and you kind of have some ideas before you go. But once you're there, you're just kind of like, okay, I'm flying. Now what? Yeah. So well, we you should... really, it, it takes, sorry to cut you off again. It takes perfect practice, right? You got to practice the right things. That's right. No, not I, just popping the drone up in I, the air. I think someone should ask that question. That's what I was going to say is someone go on Astro and you and say, what, like, what advice do you give us for doing practice? Because in my eyes, I'm like, oh, you know what? There's probably three things that everyone should practice each week. And so like the hover drill being one, Mm. uh, reverse orientation being another. Um, But I've got kind of like my mind spinning now on like that system. But uh, it goes back to the importance of systems for scalability, especially when you're in public safety, especially when you have multiple people flying the same aircraft. Um, You've got to have those systems. It's just so critical. I mean, I will never forget one particular guy in a drone group that we trained had forgotten that there were batteries on the bottom of this M210 case and never charged them. The funny thing is they went out to the field and they ran out of batteries and they didn't complete the job and they had to go back the next day. Well, the site foreman who was our client said, damn it, this showcases the role and importance of not only systems, but specificity. 
because there were batteries in the bottom of that box. And guess what? They were charged and we would have been able to finish the job that day instead of wasting a whole nother day. And it just goes to show there's so many nuanced problems that can happen in drone programs, especially when you're just working in groups. Yeah. And again, it goes back to why we developed this props uh, platform to really make those the lives of uh, drone pilots and managers easier. So anyways, uh, shameless plug, forgive me, but don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do or don't, yeah, it's up to you. I won't read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. Um but that I'm not. <laughs> but that said, uh I, I hope this helps. I hope that there will be a product out soon. Uh I would love to see Colorado drone chargers. Uh, actually do this, create this product. And uh, it would be the solution that would solve a huge problem for, yeah. for departments as a whole. So. Yeah. So keep your eye out on that, Todd. Definitely. Colorado drone chargers. Take them a little while, but um, it, yeah, it, but there could be something coming that would really help the very specific issue you're dealing with. Sometimes they do take a while. But what I will say is one thing about John, who owns Colorado drone chargers, when he says he's going to do something, he does it. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember one time at the fly-in, and he did what he said he was going to do, even though it wasn't the uh, best situation, but... Yeah, no, he's great. And he's dealing with supply issues like everybody else, so yeah, that's a challenge for sure. He said due to demand, it will take about a week to get a charger, so... No, that's, that's not, not bad. That's not bad at all. No. Uh, I guess he doesn't need many microprocessors for that. No, no, he doesn't, I would imagine. But I bet the... the but he might for this new product. This is true. This is very true. <laughs> so, the very good we'll point, see. Rob. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, but uh, I bet there's a bunch of crypto miners that uh, isn't happy to be in the vicinity of Colorado drone chargers as they're buying up all the power supplies. That's right. <laughs> EVGA, I bet you got a great client. Everybody wants their piece of the action. That's right. <laughs> anyway, that is going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. If you want to support the show, there's a couple things you can do. Leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever ever you listen to the show, you can become a drone you member because as you probably know, and as I keen, as I continue to learn, we should always be learning to just expand our toolbox. So if you want to support us, become a drone you member, $47 a month. I promise you will not regret it. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>